Hey pilots, got a pair of videos for you today that I hope you enjoy. We're taking out the Key 94 II, uh, which is an interesting kind of uh, expansion uh, or slight strategy change in the uh, Japanese line for, I believe this is the Air Force line as opposed to Zero being the Navy line, I think, um, if I remember my history right. But if you're a big history buff and I've said incorrectly, you know, throw a, throw a suggestion in the comments uh, about what I missed there. But pretty sure this was a, well, I shouldn't say Air Force, I guess Army plane. But uh, it's the first one in line where automatically as you're grinding it, you can get a boost cooler on it. And so I decided as I was grinding through this line, I wanted to try using it as a, an offensive fighter, right? So normally with the Zeros and the rest of the Japanese planes, uh, light fighters anyway, you kind of take a zone and you squat on it. You find an important zone, you, um, you know, kind of just grab it and hold it. So I tend to call that defensive fighters. And so these, uh, these lines are more defensive fighters. But in this one, because I've got the boost cooler and because I've got great altitude performance and excellent cannons, I'm like, well, let's try it as an offensive fighter. You know, is it possible that I can kind of get through and just cap as many zones as possible, follow that golden rule of World War planes, ABCs of World War planes, always be capping, right? And uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and stay offense as offensive as possible in these two matches, capping zones as much as possible, and just trying to force the issue. And I've got an, I've got an eye diving on me, and I dove the, I, I peeled out the wrong way, absolute wrong way. Uh, so mistake number one, how I managed to get out of that. I guess the, uh, the larger cannons didn't connect, which I'm fortunate with. Uh, so although it's got pretty good flight characteristics it is a little slower still right and so you need that boost cooler to hit that max speed and get there which you can do um, and the other thing is it is very fragile as well so you have to be very careful I'm chasing this guy and dropping my altitude because you know if I can get him we get the zone and I want to take the zone and then I figure I'll deal with the other plane um, as needed but we've got the zone and that's fine with me. Good, I'm gonna move ahead, right? I'm just gonna keep keep pushing on and I see we've almost got this airfield and I see the other, one of their players is there as well. So this is a point of contention here. If I can send them uh, to respawn and take the airfield as well, we'll be up two to one and we'll have a good leg up in this match. So it's an F2H, I'm not gonna be able to run him down. So I've gotta hope he makes a mistake and he does. Um, he has to deal, I think more with the 262. Uh, but he continues to turn rather than advancing and pulling away. And so I just continue to use guns on him. And there's decent range on these. The 30 millimeters on it don't quite have the range that you would hope. Um, but they're not bad guns at all. Um, it just takes a little while to dial them in. And this match and, and the next match in particular, you'll see, it can give you issues uh, with trying to get everything in the grouped up well and, and utilized so even though it's a lot of firepower sometimes it can be frustrating uh, in this plane doing that so i'm going to move right back to the middle uh we're going to you know again we're just working on caps right so uh, and in this one there's the airfields there's the mining plants there's not much i can do about the mining plants as a light fighter uh, but if i can just work my way through and shoot down aircraft as much as possible and you can see here's the eye back again so we're going to work on him and uh see what we can do there and just kind of continue to cap zones, cap zones, cap zones, uh, as much as we can, and we continue to keep pressure up on the enemy. And in this case, the pressure right now on me is coming mostly in the form of air defense aircraft, so that's fine. I'll take the free you know, 40 capture points for knocking this guy out of the air. And the other two planes have gone along elsewhere. And so that leaves me with just the air defense aircraft. So I'm kind of pondering what I do here as you're on a light fighter, because that's going to be 40 of the 60 I need. But as you can see, this is one of those moments where I can't get the guns to line up. And you know what I eventually figured out with this uh, line, which I'm almost done grinding now, is to wait to not open range, open fire at max range, um, but really to get in kind of 400 meters before I open up. There's you got to trust the firepower. Okay, I'm gonna have to dip out now. That F28, F2H is absolutely coming in on me. I thought, but for a second time, he actually goes for someone else, and I need to save my air, to, my uh, ground attack aircraft, because uh, if he gets those points, I'm down 80, and now I gotta go kill more stuff. And fortunately, I force him to break off. But again, he dives and turns, which is probably the one thing you don't want to do you know, against uh, this aircraft. The diving's a good idea. Uh, turning is not, and then he just drives himself from the ground, which ends up flipping the zone for me. So that's helpful, and in fact, he's going to switch off of the F2H after this. I don't know if he didn't feel comfortable playing it, or uh, 
you know, maybe it wasn't, maybe he was trying to get uh, some XP on it and unlock some modules and just wasn't there yet. But he's going to switch over to an F6 pirate, I believe, if I remember right. So I'm trying to make sure I don't get aced by this uh, ground attack aircraft's tail gunners. And as I'm doing that, I realize, oh, here's the you know, player ground attack aircraft. And uh, whether you, I don't know if you know this or not, but, you know, the ILs are pretty slow. And so I'm like, well, if I can send them to the hangar and hang on to my airfield, what a great thing. And then I realize Wolf, my teammate, is over here, and he's gunning for the F-84. So I'm going to stick on the IL-20. I'm not going to follow him. I don't want to get bomb trapped. And I've already got him almost dead anyway. So Wolf uh, cracks the F-84. I knock down the IL-20, and the zone is secure. So now it's time to get another zone, right? I'm going to keep pushing that tempo. And I like the fact that the airfield is already half gone. So I'm going to push my way over to that and see what I can do. Um, and I use that boost cooler, right, to kind of get the get the well, first, first legs of this long journey done. <laughs> So I do have this uh, built uh, for uh, two things. I've got an uprated engine uh, in the um, uh, power plant slot, and then I have reinforced uh, HP in the uh, maneuver slot. I, I don't really know there's much to be gained by increasing the maneuverability, and it also costs you hit points. And here's that eye again. I'm going to go ahead and clip him so I don't have to deal with him later. Doesn't cost me any time at all. I'm going to try and crack, uh, crack down on this airfield, too. If I can get in there, it'll be 3 to 1. And the air defense aircraft are there, but still, it should be. I think I feel confident we can get it done, right? So um, anyway, uh, I start with this guy, thinking I'm going to pull into the damaged ones and finish them off quickly. And of course, the ADA would get a lucky shot, crack my cockpit. And then um, we get some bot help there. We're down to 60. So I'm like, yes, this is it. This is going to turn quickly. Um, and then we lose one. <laughs> so, and then this time the lightning is in uh, the pirate. And again, I think he's coming for me and he pulls off. I don't know if he's pulling off too soon or if he has other things in mind, but unfortunately the air defense aircraft this time gets my engine. And this is a fragile fighter. That's why I put the reinforced HP on it. Uh, but even in uh, the pirate there, you're not gonna outturn this plane, right? So. And again, true to the, you know, wanting to try this out as an offensive fighter, that's why I went with the uprated engine as opposed to something else in there. You could have used the boost, but I'm always a little nervous planes like this. It, that extra second of boost can be very helpful. And this uh, zone has proven to be much more stubborn than I thought it would be with the back and forth. But it looks like we're going to take it. we got other people here. We're going to clear out another ADA, and that should be enough. Great. So in the meantime, uh, because of our holding on to the airfields, and I don't know if you saw, but when I came over here, even though the enemy had captured that minefield, we had ground attack aircraft already there. Um, and so I knew they would be working on it. Sure enough, it is now captured. So the only thing left is that airfield over there. Uh, the air plant, the uh, mining plant is also starting to fall, uh, but I'm not quite as worried about that. I'm really just hoping it holds out for the 30 seconds, right? And I realize, man, we're, we're almost through this match anyway. So I'm going to try and get over here, and I'm wondering if we're going to air, air, get air superiority or not. But until then, I'm going to get what I can. So I'm going to clip off one more enemy plane here, get some more personal points, and hopefully some XP. Uh, since I am grinding uh, this line, I want to finish it off, and I get him right before we roll over into the finish. So that will be game number one. And uh, we'll look at the post game. But, you know, 10,000 points, not bad. I got an Akamatsu over there. Um, and um, conquer, I think, with the, the capture points. Yeah. Uh, and Wolf is like, yeah, good game. Go get them, uh, which is awesome. I was like, yeah, <laughs> nice, nice stuff. So, Wolf, thanks for being a good teammate. Uh, you did a great job uh, working on capturing sectors as well and keeping the game in front of us. So I appreciate it. And uh, I think you're going to see Wolf added me to contacts afterwards, and I added him as well. And you are welcome to do that also if you are watching this video. Uh, I'm happy to uh, say hello and have you on my contact list. Um, and if it's helpful, fly with you, answer questions, whatever else. But as you can see, four sectors, 12 aerial targets destroyed, um, and uh, grabbed 520 capture points. So 
pretty solid uh, outing on this. And only two destroy when defending, right? So I, 10 of those were on the offensive. And that was really the point, is can I push the tempo in this plane a little bit? Can I take it on the offensive? Do I at least have the flexibility to do that? Because it is one of the weaknesses of the line. Uh, the Japanese nation, tech tree as a whole, is you know the aircraft are just not very fast for the most part. And uh, when I saw that I could get a boost cooler on this, I'm like, yeah, we're going to try that. Um, you may have noticed in the other slots, um, I did not have a new assist nor do I have any maneuver gear on I just feel like it's already very nimble so I'm not terribly worried about that um, I am worried about the fact that it catches on fire very easily and so that's why I actually have uh, the co2 in that uh, airframe slot rather than the pneumatic assist kind of cut down on the chance of having a fire doesn't mean you're not going to get stuff broken, which obviously you saw a couple of times in there. I did. Uh, but also you can see here, 21 critical damage. It, it puts out as many crits as it gets in. So it's just a matter of uh, flying and using it well. So that's match number one. I got four sectors and 12 kills. And uh, we want to push on to the second match. And this one was interesting. So I'm only up against one other human pilot, but they're in a J21RB, which is a, a fairly good multi-role at tier 8, right? It's premium multi-role. Um, and I don't know, he could have it uh, put in America with Mary in it, so one of the special pilots, he may have it somewhere else, I don't know, but my guess is he's going to be moving all over the map capping sectors, because that would be his best bet here. So what I need to do is do the same thing, I need to be out capping him, right, just go, go, go. Um, especially since, um, you know, there's going to be uh, some opportunities here, there's not any mining plants, right, so I have the opportunity to go on all these sectors and, and get them. And I wanted to see what would happen as an alternative to just squatting on the rocket base in the middle, right? Unfortunately, as you can see in this match, I, for whatever reason, just never got the guns quite dialed in. And there's a lot of places in here where I lost time because I couldn't quite seem to get guns on target, get planes on the ground, you know, HP dialed down to zero as quickly as I probably should have. Uh, I'm going to chalk that up to pilot error. I don't think the guns are really that inaccurate. Uh, but as I've mentioned to you guys, it's been a very busy couple of weeks, and so I'm often playing late at night trying to squeeze in a game or two, get a daily, or just get a, get a times three or times two, right? So, and that's part of why I'm giving you a long video this uh, to begin the week here. I will have another video later in the week, and no commentary, just gameplay video uh, for you all to see. And uh, But I wanted to give you a good good one here. I'm, I'm out of town this week, so uh, that's why it's uh, it's a limited limited action but uh thankfully this is the last week i am super busy and after this i look forward to kind of circling back to those two videos a week and exploring some new topics with all of you in terms of the game mechanics which is really what i love doing so we flipped this zone almost immediately because we got a fuck wolf on 90 over there um, i get cracked in the back and i didn't i thought it was a server lag issue i didn't realize that i just had three quarters of my hp taken away and that was because there was a TA-152, and I was watching the mini-map, but all of our dots were so close together, I didn't quite realize he was there. And now I feel a little bit of pressure. We are up a zone. We're up a few points, but, you know, I'm going to de I'm gonna have to defend. I don't want to, but there's three enemy planes over this airfield, and it's the only, you know, the only zone of importance that we've captured. You know, the garrison by our side, obviously, we're going to hang on to that, but... So I have to respawn here and I've got to do some clearing. So fortunately, I can kind of jump on the TA-152. I didn't land a single shot. Uh, and again, I was really frustrated with that. Like this, I, you know, I felt like it was a good match overall, but it could have been better if I had just been aiming a little better. So back in the day in 1.x, uh, this might be because I don't have a legacy of good aim. So uh, when I flew in a flight in 1.x uh, with either Drax or other players that I flew with, Wraith and Liggs and some of those guys, um, I was always the rabbit, uh, so you know, I was the guy that was the bait plane, um, engaging, merging, leading him on a merry goose chase and letting my teammate knock him down, so, um, and that was because my aim is just, it's still atrocious, I think, I need to figure that out somehow, but uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm thankful for the firepower of this plane because it makes up for, you know, the bad, uh, bad aim that I have a little bit. So we're 20 points into this zone, but obviously you're about to lose that bomber. So I'm going to come off of these. I realize the Key 83 is going out of the zone. I'm out of the zone. That doesn't help. I need the zone captured, so I'm going to leave him for now after drilling a little bit of HP off of him. And I'm going to have to stay after these guys. And this is one of those places where the high altitude of the Key 94, you can sh see that shine a little bit. I'm up at 2,300 meters and have no problem kind of hunting these uh, heavy aircraft down. 
and really knocking them out. So thankfully they're good. I saved our bomber, but there's nothing else for me to do in this zone right now. And then I see, oh, the key 93 is coming back in. So I've got an opportunity to take another 60 uh, capture points for this zone. And then he dives right back out of the zone. So I'm trying to kind of wait and whittle without killing and then put him in. And finally we do it and we're down to 60 in the zone. Now I have a decision to make here. I've killed the defense aircraft. There's no enemy aircraft here. You know, do I push on? And I think, yeah, I probably need to push on for that airfield. And uh, when I realize that uh, the J-21's over there, I definitely want to head that way. Unfortunately, there's a TA-152 floating around me, and I'm a little nervous since I got pegged last time by him. So I do, and of course he takes out a, a plane, so now we're back up to 60. But if I can kill him, that will flip the zone, and all will be well with the world. So I'm going to, at the risk of slowing down my you know, capturing process or, or losing out on the airfield over there, I'm going to get this rocket base flipped for us. And thankfully, nothing has really moved on the airfield, so I'm shoving on to there. And again, thankfully, I can do that because I've got this boost cooler, and I pop it immediately. And you can see the plane accelerates up near its cap very, very well. It's got a powerful engine on it. So the, th or I guess I should say the thrust is really good on it, right? Um, so it can get up there, but it's just not super speedy. Fortunately, Vinny does not see me coming in, and so I'm able to get on his tail. And fortunately, I can't get the guns to work again. So this is a fun plane to fly, though. It responds so well. Um, the elevator, you know, and the pitch controls and the, the rudder controls. It is. Unfortunately, because I couldn't get guns on in time, Vinny was able to flip the zone, and now it's locked, right? So I've got uh, some decisions to make. We're down three zones to two, even though we have uh, the rocket base. So I'm going to stick here and try and cap this one. It helps there's a big fat Messerschmitt in there. So I chunk a little off of him, and then I head after these air defense aircraft. It's 180 capture points, so if I can get four of them down, and maybe the multi-roll here in the zone with me does a little capping. I couldn't remember if it, what kind of multi-roll it was. So a little bit of defensive flying, avoid ADAs. Realize, why am I going for the heavy when there's a light ADA right here that I should be able to clip pretty quickly? And I hear small line is coming, so I'm like, well, that's always um, a little bit of a nerve-wracking thing when you're in a plane that's not very durable, right? And I'm over a zone where there's a ADAs and an aircraft. All right, we got to get this done as quickly as possible. The P-1056 would be ideal because I could flip the zone with him, but he's leaving the zone, so that doesn't help. And uh, that J4M is actually was trying to follow my aircraft, I think, so he didn't lock me head on. So uh, that's the best thing I could hope for. We're going to go ahead and clear him out. Doesn't matter we're outside the zone. ADAs count anywhere. And I'll wait for him to burn out and just make it happen. So only 20 points left. Just got to finish this uh, light defense aircraft. And again, I cannot get the guns to work. And so I've got to come back across for another one. And in the time that I've been uh, piddling around with that, they have captured the rocket base in the middle. So now I'm a little worried. We're 100 points down. And although we do have three zones to two, they have the rocket base. And this is what I was worried about. You know, Vinny in the multi-roll is able to run around in cap zones uh, you know, very more efficiently than I should be able to. And I've really got to continue to push the tempo uh, to make this work uh, on the offensive. And there's a question here. Would I have been better served squatting on the rocket base? I'm not sure that I would have in this map. And here's why. The two airfields. Because um, if the J-21 takes the two airfields, I've got to kill stuff coming into the middle zone so quickly. You know, at some point I'm going to lose the middle zone, and I will have you know, I'll probably be an uphill battle on other zones as well, especially the airfields. So not super excited about that. So that's part of why I wanted to push the tempo here. Narrowly avoid the TA-152 diving in on me again. Um, sniper aircraft are dangerous in the hands of bots. We all know that. And that's certainly the case here as well. So we've hit squall line, though, and I have a chance to knock out some aircraft, and that's what I want to do. I'm keeping an eye on the TA-152. But multi-rolls, especially this Focke 1.90D, if I can get it out, great. And he's not burning out. No, he burns out, so good. And I feel and see the TA-152 again. 
here, <laughs> uh, which seems to have fallen in love with my plane, target priority-wise. Uh, we've managed to pick up a fourth zone, though, and we just surpassed them in points, so I'm feeling a little comfortable. I think I'm going to wait and, you know, flip this last zone using him and then realize he's kind of crippled and not going into the zone, and I just need him out, especially with as dangerous as he's been for a bot. I need him gone. Only three enemy planes left. We have four of the zones, and now I'm feeling very confident, especially with that last zone just on a sliver and us having two bombers over there. I decide I'll head over. Maybe I can kill the heavy while I'm here. There's only three enemy planes left. You know, maybe I can take out an ABA. We'll see. And as it turns out, between the heavy and the two heavy ADAs, they're able to get the bomber. One of the bombers, but ground attacker and other bomber have showed up here as well. And so we're able to finish that out. And for one last time this match, the guns are going to fail me. I do not get a final kill uh, with their superiority timer running because I just can't get these things lined up. Very disappointing. I do have gun sight on it, and I, you know, um, but the reality is this is one of those, these cannons are ones where you, you need the auto aim but more so than the accuracy. But another Akamatsu, another Conqueror, again, flying offensively. Great. I got, you know, nearly 13,000 personal points that time, and we're able to pull out the win. Um, against a multi-role, which is great. Um, it feels good in this plane to have that flexibility to be able to go on the offensive rather than just squatting on his own. Uh, have to, you know, I like flexibility in my planes. I like to be able to adapt to different situations, uh, different maps, and still be able to contribute. And this is certainly one that helps do that. So you can see here, uh, 17 targets down, nearly 5k damage, 21 crits, 660 capture points this time, and this time only one when defending. Um, and so I really pushed that tempo and was able to squeeze out five sectors with it. So excellent. That's kind of the one thing you want to do uh, regularly to be securing victories with most of the aircraft, right? Is just pushing that tempo and getting as many zones as possible um, rather than being on the defensive. And that's kind of why I put the video up last week with the S199 with the Sakin knife in it, uh, because it was a rare instance of having to go on the defensive rather than the offensive uh, to be able to kind of um, seal out the victory on that one. But it went really well. So I hope you've enjoyed these two videos, uh, or the, the two replays, I guess I should say, in this video. Again, I have another video coming out later in the week. No commentary, just some gameplay for you all to enjoy. And I hope you have a, a fabulous week. We'll see what kind of sales and things are coming on with April rolling around the corner tomorrow. Don't forget to pick up your BVP 203 if you want it. Uh, it's a very cheap price if you just buy the basic package with all the goodies in it. Um, 27 for a tier 8, a very viable tier 8 heavy uh, is a great deal. So, And uh, when I get back a week after this, we'll have some videos on the P38L, which I also picked up, and the BVP 203. So we can uh, spend some time in action. We'll make it a week of heavies. Until then, good luck, good hunting, and good flying.